Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, here's an integral I got off the channel, Mass 505. Um, he posted it on Friday, I believe now, um, as this, is po this video is posting. Um, it will be Sunday, so I hope I'm not stepping on his toes. Um, usually with these types of videos, you've gotten all the views you're gonna get. You know, a few might trickle in after a couple days. But for the most part, I think uh, I think he will have gotten the majority of the views for this video, um, or the video in which he did this integral, which I will link to um, if you want to watch his video. Um, and also, I am going to solve it a different way, so, you know, it's not that big a deal that I'm copying it. Um, plus, nobody owns math. <laughs> I mean, um, let's just get into it. So, uh, the first step is I, I don't like this e to the x plus 1 over e to the x minus 1, so I'm just going to set that equal to u. So we'll let u equal e to the x plus 1 over e to the x minus 1. And then let's see what that's going to give us for a dx. Um, well, we're going to have to solve that for x. So let's... Um, let's try to get all our e to the x terms on one side. So we'll multiply both sides of that by e to the x minus 1, giving us u e to the x minus u is equal to e to the x plus 1. Let me get a different pen. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now I will... Bring this e to the x over here and bring this u over there. So we're going to have u e to the x minus e to the x is equal to 1 plus u. Then factoring out the e to the x, we'll have e to the x times u minus 1 is equal to 1 plus u. Then we'll have e to the x is equal to 1 plus u over u minus 1. Then we'll have x is equal to the natural log of 1 plus u over u minus 1, giving us dx is equal to, let's see, 1 over the inner function, which is just going to be u minus 1 over 1 plus u, times a quotient rule. So we'll have low d high minus high d low over the bottom squared, which is u minus 1 squared. Right away, I see I can cancel out one of these u minus 1s with this, giving us just 1. And let's see, our lower function is u minus 1 times the derivative of our higher function. That's just going to be u minus 1. And then we'll have 1 plus u there. Um, let's get rid of these parentheses and distribute the negative sign. So that's a negative. u minus u is just 0. We'll just get a negative 2 on top. And then let's uh, get rid of that negative sign and switch this to a 1 minus u. 1 minus u. And let me get even a different pen. Or one. Alright. So, all in all, our dx is going to be equal to 2 over 1 minus u squared. Okay, so let's apply that substitution now to our integral i. So i is going to be equal to the integral. Let's see, if we plug in 0, we'll get 2 over 0, or just infinity. And then we'll get 1 for our upper bound. And then we'll get natural log squared of u. And then our dx is 2 over 
1 minus u squared du. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's let W, no, we'll let U equal 1 over W, implying that DU is equal to negative 1 over W squared DW. So now we'll have I being equal to 2 times the integral from 1 over infinity is 0 to 1 over 1 is 1. Uh, natural log squared of 1 over w, uh, that is negative natural log w squared. So that's that will not change. That will still just be natural log squared w over 1 minus u, uh, sorry, w, to the negative 2 times negative 1 over w squared dw. Let's uh, distribute this w squared into here. So we're going to get a w squared here and a 1 here. And now this goes away. We'll just have a dw. And then I'm going to let this uh, negative sign switch the w squared and the 1. So we'll have 1 minus w squared. 1 minus w squared. All right. So uh, really it did not change much. Um, integrand stayed the same, and our bounds just switched from 0 to 1. Uh, but those bounds from 0 to 1 are good because now we can use... Uh, the Taylor series representation for 1 minus w squared on 0 to 1. And recall that that is this, um, the sum uh, n going from 0 to infinity of, this will be x to the 2n, uh, and that's equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared on negative 1 to 1. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace these with x's, all the w's here with x's. That way... It's just more more familiar. That's a more familiar uh, variable to work with, and then we should get rid of this substitution. Just pretend like we never used it, and just stated that that was true, which it is. Okay. So, all right. Well, how does that help us? Not a whole lot yet, but. Um, let's erase this, and let's create a function of t that we can take two derivatives of and recover uh, two factors of natural log x. Well, a tempting one would be this, the integral from 0 to 1 of... Uh, x to the t over 1 minus x squared dx. That would be a tempting substitution to make, but that integral doesn't converge for any real values of t. So we can't do that. I mean, well, actually we can. We could, since we're not actually interested in this function, we're interested in its second derivative. But... There's problems using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign uh, with um, if you're, uh, you know, the, the integral you're, you're taking the derivative of does not converge for any values of the parameter with which you're differentiating with respect to. So um, 
this is what we need to do. We need to, uh, we need to do this. There. There's our f of t. That makes it okay to use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign on it, because this integral does converge for t greater than negative one. All right, so we'll use that. All right, so we have f of t is equal to that. Now let's just go ahead and take two derivatives of that. Um, f double prime of t is going to be equal to negative integral zero to one of um, x to the t natural log squared x over one minus x squared dx. And then we can note that i is simply going to be equal to negative 2 times f double prime at t is equal to 0. We evaluate that at t is equal to 0. We're just left with natural log squared x over 1 minus x squared dx. Uh, if we take the negative of it, this negative cancels, and if we put a 2 in front of it, we have exactly that thing right there. Okay. So now let's uh, let's rewrite our um, our f of t using the Taylor series representation for one over one minus x squared. So our new f of t is equal to. Let's see. We're going to break this up into two separate integrals. So we're going to have the integral going from 0 to 1 of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n dx minus the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n plus because you can see we can split that up into two separate integrals. They'll both be sort of uh, the integral 0 to 1 of a sum of this form, but the second sum, which is subtracted, um, would have an extra value, an, an x to the t applied to it right there, which we can bring inside the sum as a, an addition to the 2n on the exponent on x. So. Um, yeah, that's what that is. Now, uh, we have to justify switching the summation and integration notations there, and um, there's, there's no problem doing that on our interval. Uh, this, you can totally integrate this function from 0 to 1, and uh, on the interval 0 to 1, this series converges, and the same is, the same is true of this. Um, so we can switch the summation and integration notations on both of these, evaluate the integral, and just have it the sum of that evaluated integral. So all in all, our f of t is going to be this. If we switch the signs, evaluate the integral, we're just going to get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2n dx, which is going to give you 1 over 2n plus 1. Similarly, if we uh, do the same thing over here, we will get minus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus t plus 1. All right, so now let's, let's figure out what 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus t plus 1 is, um, so we can combine them into one sum. Well, let's see. If we cross multiply, we get 
uh, 2n plus t plus 1 minus 2n minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times 2n plus t plus 1. All right? That would be our common denominator. This would be there, which is right here. And this, which is multiplied by a negative 1, would be up there. All right, so that goes away, that goes away. Plus 1, minus 1. So we're just left with a T over that thing. Okay, so our f of t is just equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of that thing. So that's what I'm going to write. Of t over 2n plus 1 times 2n plus t plus 1. All right, now we need to take two derivatives with respect to t of that thing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, we're just going to have to do it, huh? Let's just do it. All right, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have a quotient rule twice. So there might be an easier way to do this. Uh, maybe we could do product rule. Now, we'll just do quotient rule. It's easy enough, this will be good practice. So, uh, well, first of all, we're going to have this one, well, we can't forget at the very end that we have a one over two n plus one. So we're gonna be taking the derivative with respect to t twice of t over two n plus t plus one. So, we will have low d high minus high p low over the bottom squared, which is 2n plus t plus 1 all squared. All right, so low is 2n plus t plus 1 d high which is just 1, minus high t d low, which is, again, just 1. So we have 2n plus 1 over this. So our first derivative is 2n plus 1 over 2n plus t plus 1 all squared, but then divided by 2n plus 1. Nice. So, that is the first derivative of the thing inside the sum. Now, taking the second derivative of this is pretty trivial. This is just this thing to the negative 2. Um, so we bring down the negative 2, which would give us a negative 2 times this thing to the negative 3. Well, we'll just add one to that exponent because it's in the denominator. So that would be the second derivative of this thing. So now we just say that f double prime of t is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of this thing. Great. Well, that's, uh, that's f double prime of 2, uh, of t. So if we take, um, i is equal to negative 2 of this thing evaluated at 0, 
that means we have to take negative 2 times this. This becomes a 4. And we evaluate this at 0. And that is the answer. There are other ways of, um, of saying this. Uh, this has some special function representations. I believe it, it, uh, it's some form of the Riemann zeta function or maybe uh, Perry's constant, I think. Um, I think he got an answer in terms of Perry's constant, which can be uh, extracted from that. But, I mean, if you're going to use special functions, um, I think it's just as, it's just as good to just uh, write what the special function is as a sum. And this is what it is. And you could get to the true value of that integral very quickly by simply adding up the terms of this. And you wouldn't have to go very far. Uh, because once you got to like the the sixth or seventh term, I mean, you're, you're good to within three decimal places at least. And for most, for most people's purposes, that's a good enough answer. So there you go, uh, guys. I hope you enjoyed that.